Representative elect Jill Dutton, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. So uh, what is your reaction to the fact that uh, you won in a very tight race by 111 votes? Well, that was it was expected. I knew that it was going to be a really close election, close race. Um, as we were out meeting voters and knocking doors, um, and I was uh, just circling back with all of my supporters and voters that I knew would vote for me, I was just pushing that vote out. I was telling them that it's great that you support me, but we really need you to come out and vote. It's really important because every vote was going to count. And I was going to ask you, why do you think you attracted more votes uh, than Brent Money, uh, who was in the runoff with you? And um, what what's your reaction to the fact that he said you really uh, sought to try to attract Democrats to vote for you? Well, first of all, I just want to um, say that the real winner um, here are the constituents of House District 2. Um, we have been without representation for eight long months, and um, it's been an arduous uh, process to get where we are today, but they are the real winners in this. Um, I think that our campaign having a, a positive message, um, we really have run, um, um, contrary to what he's been saying, and we really have run a positive message. Um, I've been getting the message out about me and, and what I want to do and what I stand for. Um, as far as uh, stealing the election with Democrats, that is absolutely ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. Two of the three counties um, that, that I won, they are primarily Republican counties. Um, they, the county that he won is primarily Democrat. Um, they have a higher concentration of Democrats there. So that's ridiculous to say that. And as you know, uh, you're going to be right back at this again for the March 5th primary where you face uh, Mr. Money again. And so I'm wondering, you know, what is your message uh, to Republican voters in the primary? And how will you go about trying to make sure that you win that, this contest again? Well, re the Republicans in this district... Um, what they care about is border security, um, lowering property taxes, and replacing the president that's the, currently in the White House. Um, they're, they're focused on those three things, and that's what we've been talking about. That's what we are running on. Um, and so uh, we're just going to continue doing the same things that we're doing. We're meeting voters. We're um, block walking. We're working really, really hard. And um, all of my supporters, volunteers, um, Donors, everyone is on board. We are excited. We are energized, and we are ready for March fifth. Uh, you uh, you were endorsed by former Governor Rick Perry. Uh, Mr. Money was endorsed by Governor Abbott, uh, Senator Cruz, and uh, Attorney General Ken Paxton. That's a lot of you know heavyweights. Um, so uh, why do you believe you attracted former Governor Perry uh, to endorse you and? What does it say? How crucial are these endorsements to the race? Well, first of all, those are those are all great endorsements. Um, I I attracted Governor Perry because in in college I worked on his last campaign as an intern. So there's a relationship there. There's a history there. Um, all of my other endorsements, it's the same thing. Congressman Lance Gooden, I have been fundraised for him. Former Congressman. Jeb Henserling, I spent seven years fundraising for him out here in the district just as, as a constituent. Um, but everybody else, the majority of my endorsements, they are from the local level. Um, they are local leaders in our communities. Um, my opponent has some local issues and some local problems with his local community, and they were flocking my way. They are interested in getting good representation um, from a state representative who will listen to to them and will represent this district um, nowhere else. Do you support taxpayer financed education savings accounts? Otherwise, yes. some critics call them vouchers. Uh, Governor Abbott calls it school choice. Um, do you support this? I do. I am fully on board with Governor Abbott's plan. Um, it's, a, it's a good plan. Um, I would have voted for what was um, in our um, legislature in the special sessions. It has accountability. It doesn't come from the permanent school fund or the formula funding system. So it had mechanisms in place that would protect our rural schools, but it also gave that, that choice 
um, for, for students in certain circumstances and with um, accountability. I also wanted to ask you about another issue that uh, some conservatives in uh, the state house, they have criticized the fact that uh, Democrats in the house can be uh, committee chairs. And uh, some conservatives want to change that so that only Republicans uh, can be committee chairs. Where are you on that issue? Sure, I, I completely understand that logic. I really do. Um, I, I don't want to see Democrats in charge of anything. And I certainly don't want to see Austin or the state capitol look like Washington, D.C. Um, but here's what I do know. I am a political science major. And um, so I have read the Federalist Papers and I understand um, why our founding fathers put in place uh, what they did. And um, they never meant for legislation to be fast and easy. They wanted it to be be slow and hard to pass. And if there's not a good bill, even if it's something that we all want, it should die and we should start over. But here is also what I know, that we had 14 constitutional amendments on the ballot on November 7th when, we, when, when our election took place, uh, round one. And um, out of those constitutional amendments, there were three very important constitutional amendments that, that passed the right to farm, the retired teachers cost of living adjustment, and that increase in the um, homestead exemption from 40,000 to 100,000. In order to get those on the ballot, you have to have two thirds of a vo vote in the house to, to pass that through the house. We only had 83 Republicans. If we had not had some token Democrats uh, appointed chairs, do you really think that we would have gotten those, those constitutional amendments passed and those three very important ones on the ballot and passed at the ballot box? So where are you though exactly? I mean, so are you saying, I just wanna be clear. So are you saying that yes, only Republicans should be committee chairs or keep it the way it is right now and have some Democrats as committee chairs? I'm just pointing out that I, I can see both sides of this issue. I think that that's something that the Republican caucus can work to work out and to discuss. My plan is to go into the Republican caucus and abide by Republican party rules. And that rule 199 says that we will go into the Republican caucus, vote by secret ballot, and um, for the most conservative speaker that we can, that we can elect, and then go out on the House floor and as a as a caucus, vote for that speaker nominee. And so right now you haven't decided what you would what position you would take. I think that's something that Republican caucus needs to discuss. Is there anything else that you would like voters to know about you? Um, I, I just want to say that I am really, really excited about representing House District 2. Um, they have waited a long time to, to have representation. We had four special sessions um, without a representative there. And I really look forward to, to representing House District 2. Um, we need everyone to get out and vote on March 5th. We've got to do this all over again. And um, I really look forward to seeing you at the doors and um, getting to know more voters that I haven't met in round one and two. I did have one other question, and that is, uh, do, would you support uh, Speaker Phelan if he uh, wins the primary? Would you support him as Speaker again? Well, I think we just talked about that. Um, I plan to go into Republican caucus um, and uh, abide by Rule 199. Um, and whoever the nominee is out of that Republican caucus is exactly who I will vote for per that rule. And, um, but my plan is, is to vote for the most conservative nominee um, who can get the job done. Jill Dutton, state representative elect for House District 2. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.